What is it that you do if a client threatens legal action? Hi guys, my name is Deepak Shukla, founder of the Pearl Lemon Group. We're a business growth and development agency based in the UK, USA, as well as serving clients worldwide. And here today, in day number 76, we're here to talk about what you should do if a client threatens legal action for whatever reason. But before we get into it, feel free to click the link in the description below to get access to seven additional strategies that are not shared in this training. And please do, if you're enjoying these videos, uh, subscribe as well as reach out to us if you need any support with your own communication training. So this is um, a, a great question. Now, first of all, please um, remember that I'm, I'm, I'm not a lawyer. So, um, you know, the disclaimer is, is that um, this is, um, you know, this is not legal advice and you should always consult a lawyer uh, or, you know, a, a legal professional in the instance if you have a client who threatens legal action. I'm going to talk about it from a um, business perspective and, and what to do in an environment like that. So first of all, you, of course, don't want that to happen. So let's talk about the elements leading up to it and surrounding it. So depending upon the circumstances, and let's just write this out because this is going to be a relatively interesting one that in, in 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 any instance where a client threatens legal action it's because at some level they feel aggravated okay now um there needs to be a determination whether that aggravation is fair or unfair um to 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 to, to a certain extent but then also there's a question around the ramifications of even if it's you feel it's unfair and they threaten and or pursue legal action is it worth something you should engage in? So what you want to do when a client feels aggravated is irrespective of the reason for the aggravation, you want to, let's see how, if I can spell it, acquiesce or, or submit's the wrong word, but you want to try and de-escalate the situation. Um, the, So acquiesces to kind of give in uh, or, you know, be, be a little bit submissive, if you will, um, but not at the extent of your own, you know, work ethic values or otherwise, and trying to de-escalate a situation. And the way that you do that, um, and, 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 and another thing before I come to it is, you know, composure and calm are important elements in all of this because it's it's scary if a client threatens legal action we've had it haven't happened several times all have been unfair but regardless the client in their own mind thought it was of course a legitimate reason so in those instances where you receive a threat whether on email on a call or otherwise then it's important to keep your composure remain calm and that's something that happens through breathing and happens through the the recognition that there's a there's a there's a significant gulf between threatening and doing okay a significant gulf between the two that the diff, the gap that someone needs to take between threatening legal action and then a point discussing it with a lawyer the lawyer asking them to put together all of their case notes or files getting the legal fees underway and kicked off to sign a letter of engagement with a lawyer and all of this type of work it take you know it takes time it takes energy and it takes money and it's generally negative for everybody. So the gap between someone threatening legal action and taking legal action is, is, is significant and you need to really upset somebody to such an extent that they decide to take legal action. So when a client's aggra aggravated, it's important to be composed and to be calm and to do what you can to de-escalate the situation and ways to de-escalate it at a practical level are you know, freight expressions such as, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. It's, you know, different versions of I'm so sorry. Such a shame. You feel that way. You know, this is definitely not what either of us want. What can we do to help resolve this? So using expressions such as this are, are fantastic. I'm so sorry, Frank, that you feel like that. It's it's not it's not it's not what either of us want. It's not you know it's not our intention. It's not my intention. 
what can we do to what can we do to resolve this and and again you know a client can sometimes typically get to a stage where they want to threaten legal action where your offers to acquiesce or de-escalate the situation and and that can you know that's four is a version of that and it comes from you know let's say bartering or you know some some kind of you know extension it's a whole range of things extension of services extension of product you know some extension some extension of some kind um it could be if it's around money partial refund full refund depending on what you feel is right in that situation developing a ultimately protocol within the business so you know within our business we've got a protocol and you know if any of my team are watching this then find out from our managing director well what is what is what is the recourse what can we do what can't we do and and having that as a ultimately guide is going to be very powerful when it comes to determining again what to actually do if a client threatens legal action so knowing ultimately your room to move knowing your cards is going to be very important and bartering um is is, is something that definitely definitely I, I say bartering it's probably the wrong word but you know offering an extension of services an extension of product a partial refund a full refund depending upon the circumstances and situation you might feel that one of those things are right okay but the important thing to do is to you know be composed be calm and not get overwhelmed and panicky because sometimes clients I say sometimes clients very rarely, but it does happen that a client is 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 unhappy and they, you know, for example, we've had legal action threatened where we refuse to give a refund to a client after giving them several months of free service and they still expect a refund based upon work from several months ago and ignore all of the things that we've done three subsequent to that. So in those instances, we wouldn't give a refund and the client has threatened legal action and what you can do in those instances is again acquiesce uh sorry i beg your pardon i'm going to sneeze hold on in those in those instances you you need to de-escalate be calm um but also don't be a walkover so what i mean by that is clients threaten to understand at times your position so when i say don't be a walkover What's more effective um, than, for example, saying, oh, no, don't, um, or, or giving the impression that you're scared of it, just saying, instead saying, that's not what we would like. Uh, these are the reasons why we think, you know, uh, legal action is inappropriate or legal action wouldn't result in a favorable outcome. Um, these are the challenges from our perspective. And then outli outlining fundamentally, if you can pull together, for, so, so if you can look at the history of a campaign um, and pull together multiple instances where they, for example, are undeserving, let's say, of either a refund or the grievance is unfair, and point out evidence to demonstrate that this threat or this threat of legal action does not come on a sound basis. If you identify 10 different points, you could ultimately share three of them at a time and used it in a series of email exchanges. Now, that's an example of what you can do in the instance where you feel the client is quite being quite bullish or being quite aggressive. So running a historical review of the campaign. So uh, review the, well, review the engagement, if you will, and look for client. Because, you know, in in the instance that you feel in the instance that you feel that this threat of legal action is totally unfair, then you need to demonstrate that through through evidence, okay? And you need to demonstrate that their claim for legal action is based upon unreasonable grounds and that you fulfilled everything that was promised. And that that is something that you demonstrate through proof. And if you didn't fulfill what was promised, it's come or what's been a massive contributing factor is things that have been outside of your control, as an example. So that's where you'd review the engagement, look for client side problems, and, and and keep them ultimately to you know go back and forth for clients over email. Now also remember, 
giving giving clients time to cool off is, is also super important. So if a client sends an angry email, it's much, much better to say, hey, Frank, I'm so, so sorry um, that you feel that way. Give me some time. I'm going to look at look at look at look at your comments um look, look at your comments take a moment to think about it and then come back to you and you can wait three or four days and you can continue that process of waiting because a lot of the time clients end up cooling off okay so they thre threaten a lot of things in the moment when they're angry so poking or stoking the bear is the worst thing to do so the best thing in those instances instead of taking massive action and sending them a pointed or uh, or, or, or emotional email, you send them an email to acknowledge that they've sent you that, to say it's apologies that you feel that way, and that you'll review the engagement and come back to them as soon as you can. And then you wait four to five days. And if you follow that process, you can often quell many, many threats of legal action because people get on with their lives. People move on to whatever else is pressing in their life, and therefore the threat dissipate. So that's a very, very effective strategy that you can ultimately engage. And when you, for example, do respond, you respond in a composed and calm way. And again, send an email saying that, you know, sorry, you feel that way. This is what we've done. Um, you know, we don't. So, so, so you can send another email that ultimately re reiterates your position, stalls the client, and, and then you continue in that fashion with three to five day gaps in between. And what often happens is a client's threat, you know, the feeling of being angry takes a lot of energy and, and clients just kind of move on. And that's better than, of course, pursuing a legal course, sending an angry email. Um, and you only need to do that when a client has sent a series of accusations across and you need to tactfully respond to them. So there you have it, guys. These are some of these strategies or at least eight strategies for what you can do if a client threatens legal action. And please do comment in the description below if you've got some takeaways, as well as subscribe if you're enjoying these videos.